and they did fine in the speed. Right, yeah, I mean, we do. We have kids that are, we put them together all the time. Um, I will say this also, as a coach, it is always the adults that panic more about what the kids can handle. Okay, the kids are so fine. If you tell those kids, you can tell a third grader you're going to do a speed round, and that third grader doesn't know any of us. They're like, okay, we're doing speed. They don't know. They really don't. It is the adults that are like, oh, I don't know if we can put that pressure on them. I don't. Kids rise to the challenge. They are fine. They are resilient. They, they, they rise to the challenge. We encourage them. Life goes on. They are fine. So. Um, that's a little confusing, but we will sort it out in registration. Um, if that happens and it doesn't get set up right in registration, we can sort that out. Um, if anybody has a single <coughs> quizzer, contact me immediately. I will plug you into a team with another church. That can be done as well. But again, that's helpful to know sooner rather than later. Well, one thing about that single quizzer, if you've got, all right, you're paying full fare on it. Right. You have right. to register the quizzer. So you have to register for that. But if you, we put them out on another team and that team scores first, you're both getting a plaque. Both churches get a plaque. That's what we have. They're paying full fare. So. Okay. And we will get to the awards later. I'll go over that a little bit more later because we wanted to talk about a couple of things with awards. Um, okay. So trek and journey teams. You can have two, three, or four kids. The teams can be co-ed. Um, again, if you have a single quizzer, let me know. Um, we can figure that out. Uh, you, but you have to have two quizzers that, to make a team. Um, and those quizzers, I don't need to know who your partners are. That, um, I just print name tags for everybody. I don't need to know. Whereas with the T and T, I print name tags, I put them on a team, and I make a, um, a seating chart for the most part for the churches. So. And there's a lot more of them. That's why it matters. The morning of would be, you know, yeah, it would be too insane. So um, each team is represented by a coach. A coach can represent more than one team. If you've got three teams and you've got one coach, that's how it works. I mean, for our church, it's probably closer to that, whereas we're going to have two or three teams, and, you know, we'll have one coach represent all those teams because we're all in the same book. But um, just to know, like, your job as a coach, um, at least up until then, <laughs> you, um, we want you to pray for your quizzers. We want you to encourage them. You know, you're supposed to be there that helping them along. It can be, it's only a couple of weeks away, but for a kid, that's a long time, and it's a lot of information. Just keep encouraging them. You know, keep moving forward. Even if you think, wow, they don't know a lot, because you're going to get kids that really... They are come in and they're, they just don't know. They just want to participate. Encourage that. Encourage them to learn what they can by the time the quiz comes along. Because the fact is, it might only be one verse that sticks with them, but that verse will make a difference at some point in their life. I truly believe that. Um, I believe that is why we are doing Bible quizzing more than anything. It is not about patches, awards, medals, plaques, or any of that, ribbons or anything. It is because at some point, when these kids are adults, they are going to remember, oh yeah, I remember I did that, and I can still say that one verse, or I can still, I remember that verse. It will make a difference, and it will have an impact. Um, the day of the quiz, we ask that um, if your T and T kids, or actually all your kids, if you are, um, if you have an Awana uniform, we ask that they would wear the shirt. Um, don't let that be a deal breaker if your kids some kids, I know they don't have the shirts. It's you know not in their budget. That's not a deal breaker. Just um, neat, clean, and modest. So they're that's on really, stage. Yeah, you're on the stage. Um, so yeah, remind your girls that they're up on the stage. Sometimes girls forget, and people are looking up. So that's the other thing. Um, the timeline for that day. Um, we start at 8:15. Is the team and volunteer check-in. We check in upstairs in the front doors. I will be at a table there, and I will have um, volunteer name tags. And actually, if I get enough volunteers, I will not be at that table. I'm going to have a volunteer there handing out name tags. Um, so your team checks in. We mark you off. We hand you your name tags. You go through and have, hand them out to the kids. Um, they need to be clearly displayed on the shirt because once we put them up on the stage, it's going to make a difference so we can see. Um, if some of the kids put them on their legs, it's just a little bit harder to see. It's easier for scorekeepers. Um, so at 8.15, we do that 
make sure you're there by that time to get your check-in. Also, your volunteers need to check in at that time too. Okay, I know that people are like, oh no, my scorekeeper, they'll be here at nine. Uh-uh. We have a meeting at 8.30 where the scorekeepers are trained. I need your scorekeeper at that meeting, okay? So it is important that volunteers check in as well as coaches and teams. Um, 8.30 is the coaches meeting. I will figure out what room that morning where the coaches meeting is and we'll, I'll direct you. It's typically in the chapel or there's a room right behind the sanctuary, like across the hall. It just depends on what is being used that morning and what isn't and we'll make the decision then. Um, the 8.30 scorekeepers meeting is in the sanctuary and it is stage left. Stage left, if you are standing on the stage it is, and you're looking out at the sanctuary, it is your left. So if you walk into the sanctuary, that would be your right. But the meeting will be stage left. Um, so at this point, because we are moving forward with the thought that Agents of Grace will be, or well, we know Agents of Grace will be quizzed. At 8.50, we put those kids on the stage. Coaches, feel free to help them. Every, the chairs will be set up kind of like this, either in two different degrees, <coughs> and there will be a, um, a little frame next to it. We'll have your church name, and it'll say uh, Grace Point, Team 2. Make sure that your kids are put in there. Um, I will also go through this in the email I send out, but your seating chart matters. Because, for instance, on their name tag, it will say um, John Smith, Grace Point Team 1, Quizzer 1. <coughs> the Quizzer 1 is going to be sitting on right. They're going to go right to left. Okay, so I will send this all out in an email. You do not have to remember this today, and I will make it clear um, and remind you how to set them up. But it's because the score sheets are pre-printed, and that way they know the scorekeepers will double check where the kids are sitting, double check their sheets, and make sure everything matches. And it makes a difference for perfect score. Because if John Smith earns a perfect score, but is sitting in the seat of... Susie Q. Yes, Susie Q. Susie Q is going to get the perfect score. Do you know what I'm saying? That's how it, it works. So um, we need to know that. Um, and again, I will send that all out. You don't have to know that all today. So at 8.50, they will take the stage. By 8.55, we are doing opening prayer. By 9 a.m., that quiz begins. Um, these, meet, these quizzes, we run them fast, and we are very prompt. I don't like to be falling behind on time, okay? Um, very important that your quizzers get here on time. I can hold the quiz for a few minutes. You know, if it was a day like today, I would give people a few extra minutes to get here, but by a certain time, I'm sorry, we have to move forward. Um, so, and ideally, we think the quiz won't take longer than an hour, but what's gonna happen is they do the 10 multiple choice, they do the 10 huddle, third and fourth grade exit the stage, it goes quick. Then there are six speed questions for fifth and sixth graders. Um, at that point, everybody leaves the stage, Score sheets are collected, they're brought over to the scorers table, and we start putting um, the next group, which would be Grace in Action, up on the stage, and we'll see how many kids there are. And if we have, I don't know if we'll have fifth and sixth graders in Grace in Action, so there may not even be a speed round for that. Um, I don't, because your church is only third and fourth. I mean, we'll see with registration. Again, though, that quiz, there is not a long delay between these, okay? We're talking 10 minutes tops. We are, that will be determined by February 1st. Right? By February 1st, we will know if this quiz is happening. Um, we're going to move forward with the thought that it's going. That's just how we'll go for right now. Um, so at 10 o'clock or sooner, if that, I mean, if we're ready to go by 945, we don't hold it until 10 o'clock. At 945, we start that next quiz. Um, and that would be the grace in action. We go through, it's the same thing. It'll be the 10 huddle, 10, uh, or 10 multiple choice, 10 huddle, and then if there are fifth and sixth graders, there will be six speed questions. Um, at that point, we have, while that quiz is going on, we've already added up the first groups, and we know who the winners are, so that we can start awards immediately as soon as that quiz is done. As soon as the second group is done, we start handing out awards, and while those awards are being handed out, we're counting up the scores for the second group of quizzers. So that is getting taken care of too. Um, as I stated, you're going to have a first through fourth in your third and fourth grade, a first through fourth in your fifth and sixth grade. Um, and we're gonna go into awards as far as participation and everything like that at the end, because we're gonna do a little bit of talking about that. Then just so you know, there is a break 
I would like to think we're going to be done uh, by 11.30, so you've got 45 minutes. If you are here all day, you've got time to run out for lunch or something like that because the trek and journey teams, the check-in starts at 12.15, um, and then 12.30 is the coaches meeting, 12.40 the scorekeepers meeting, um, and I'm assuming your scorekeepers meeting is at the front of the sanctuary as well, and they would probably do the coaches meeting in the same room wherever the morning is. That will be determined the day of. Um, one o'clock, the trek quiz begins. At, by two o'clock, the journey quiz begins. Um, and the awards are all handed out at the completion of the journey quiz. That evening, we have like a fun party thing here in the gym, 4.30 to 6.45. It's called Youth Quest. There's games. We've got um, Gaga Pit, Carpet Ball, Nine Square. There's usually music playing. There's pizza. It's $5. It's just a nice way for the kids to come and celebrate and hang out, especially those older kids if they've um, if they've competed in the more, or in the afternoon round, I mean, hang out and get some. It's for sixth grade and older. On that one, um, this permission form from earlier in the day will apply. If a kid is coming in only for the youth quest, right. we have to have a separate parent permission slip. Um, I mean, I'm keeping them, we'll keep them all for, for all day, so it's not going to be that big of a thing. Any adults who want to stay also have to sign the, the volunteer current volunteer thing because we have to track you and, and you'll be banded. The kids are not going to be banded, but the band is only to show that we have received your volunteer form coming in. Okay. Um, so you'll see then the next thing is the quiz material. I've already gone over the multiple choice, the huddle, the six speed. Um, the material covered for TNT, it is the start zone and units